We're going to look at the domains of some combined functions, and it's sometimes easier to think of domain in terms of what points are not allowed rather than what points are allowed. So the two main restrictions that we find on domains occur when we have points that are undefined, and that will one way that we get undefined points is by having zeros in the denominator. So you can see that we have two functions here, and each of these two functions has a bad point in the denominator. So whatever points are making these functions bad in their original state are going to continue when we uh, make a combined function. So for example, the combined function f plus g of x and we'll put that together and make the sum of these two functions so it'll be f of x which is 2 over x plus x plus 1 divided by x minus 3. And we could put these two fractions together with a least common denominator but we don't we're not asked to actually find the combined function, but what we are asked to do is to find the domains. So when we look at the domain of f plus g of x, again we see there's a bad point at x is equal to 0 and a bad point when x is equal to positive 3, and so we don't want x to be equal to either 0 or positive 3. But we are going to understand that all other points um, will not give a bad point, that means that they will give a value which is defined, and so they are allowed in the domain. So when I go to write my domain, I should put it in set builder notation, but I'm going to write it as the set of x such that x is not equal to either 0 or 3. And so again, that's the domain for this combined function. And as you can see, for the other functions, so for the subtracted and the multiplied function, if we find f minus g of x, we're going to get the same bad points. So we have 2 divided by x minus x plus 1 over x minus 3. And again, we could put this together as a single fraction, but we don't really need to. We can again just say that the domain forces us to eliminate the bad points, but when we don't eliminate points, we will understand those points to be uh, usable. And so our domain is, again, the set of all x's except the ones that are bad. So we don't want x to be equal to 0 or positive 3. Same is true for the product. So when we take f times g of x, we will uh, get 2 over x multiplied by x plus 1 over x minus 3. And again, we have the same bad points or points that would give us 0 in the denominator. So uh, similarly, our domain is going to be that same set. It's the set of all x's such that x is not equal to 0 or positive 3. However, when we go down to the quotient, there are two things that we have to be careful of. So one is the original bad points from the function, so f divided by g of x is going to be the first fraction, which is 2 over x, but we're going to divide by x plus 1 over x minus 3. And so uh, when we simplify that fraction, we get 2 over x, but we can take the second fraction, invert it, and multiply, and now we've got x minus 3 in the numerator over x plus 1 in the denominator. And the problem here is that by inverting this fraction, we've ended up with a new bad point. And so we are restricted in our domain in that we're not allowed to have x be either of the original bad points at 0 or positive 3, but we also don't want x to be a negative 1, because that would also give us 0 in the, den in the denominator. That point 
is undefined, so it's eliminated from the domain. So we can write this domain more formally, as we did previously, that our domain is going to be the set of x values such that x is not equal to 0 or positive 3 or negative 1. Next, let's take a look at an example of two functions whose domains are restricted in a different way. When we have a square root function, the domain is going to be limited by those values that give a positive uh, expression inside of the radical, because whenever we have numbers inside the radical that are negative, those will give undefined um, functions, and therefore they are considered not in the domain. So the first thing that it asks us to do is to sketch the graphs. So for our first function, f of x is equal to square root of 2 minus x. We're going to um, realize that this is a square root function which needs to be transformed. So the very first thing I'm going to do is factor out the negative sign inside because we want the x to come first and be positive. So this is going to be a negative on the outside parentheses times x minus 2. So for this radical function, there are um, several things going on. The first one is that this is going to uh, be flipped to the left. And the second is that it's going to also be shifted two to the right. So I can imagine the original uh, square root function. And again, if I were to flip this, it would go over to the left this way. And then shifting it two units to the right, I can draw the function like this. Next, I want to look at the second function which is g of x, and so we've got that g of x is equal to 2 times square root of x plus 3. And again, this radical will limit our domain because the values on the inside of the radical need to be positive. And if we were to graph this, uh, just like before, we can use the square root function as our guider but when we draw the new function, x plus 3 is going to shift the function over by 3 units, so our starting point will be here. And there's no flipping here, but we will uh, multiply by a factor of 2, which means that it's taller. So instead of having a value of 1 at this point, we're going to actually have a value of 2. And then when we go 4 units out and normally would have a value of 2, we will double that and have a value of 4 up here. And so if I uh, draw this uh, value, it's going to look something like this. And the height of this graph isn't so important as the region where both of these functions are defined. And so we can see that for f of x that uh, we have values when x is less than positive 2, but for g of x, we have only values when x is greater than positive 3. So the domain, the x values, are, is going to be in this region of overlap between the two functions. And that's going to occur here. And so if we uh, want to state the domain explicitly, it's going to be the, re the region where the values of x, where x is between a negative 3 and a positive 2, and those endpoints are included because when the interior of this radical is equal to 0, that point is defined. And so this is going to go between negative 3, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to positive 2. Another way that we could write this Perhaps it's easier to write this in interval notation because of the way that I've sort of um, shaded the domain here, but it's going to start on its lower endpoint at negative 3, and it goes in the interval all the way up to the value positive 2. So we could also state the domain that way. This is one way of calculating domains by using graphing. However, we could also do this uh, algebraically. So when we start off with our original function f of x 
which is square root of 2 minus x. As before, we want this interior to not be negative because it becomes undefined when the interior is negative. So that interior of 2 minus x should be greater than or equal to 0 is also allowed. And when we solve it for x, we can add x to both sides. We get that 2 is greater than or equal to x. Or writing it in the more conventional way, we'll put x on the left and say that x is less than or equal to 2. We can do the same thing for g of x. So um, going back to our function, g of x is equal to 2 times square root of x plus 3. And what we are primarily concerned with is, again, the inside of this radical. And we want the inside of that radical to be greater than or equal to 0. So we'll write that explicitly. x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. So solving for x, we end up then with x should be greater than or equal to a negative 3. Now we have two inequalities that restrict the domain. So we have x is less than or equal to 2, or and I should say and because uh, these two are an intersection. So uh, x is less than 2 and also x must be greater than negative 3. And if we take the intersection of those two intervals, we can graph this on a number line. To the right of 0, we have a positive 2. And if x is less than positive 2, we can shade this area and put an arrow going in this direction because this goes on forever. And on the uh, right-hand side, because it's got an equal to sign, we will use a square bracket to indicate that the point at positive 2 is included. Then for x is greater than negative 3, if we uh, have a point marked at negative 3, greater than indicates that it needs to uh, go to the right, so we would shade to the right. But also have a square bracket at negative 3. So the area where these two graphs inter uh, overlap or intersect is in that region between negative 3 and positive 2. And so we can write that in interval notation, the interval between negative 3 and positive 2 as we had earlier. If we wanted to, we could also express it in set builder notation using um, the set of x such that x is greater than negative 3 but less than positive 2.